Welcome back everyone, thank you for tuning in, really do appreciate it. Um, so, I wanted to share with everyone a, an exciting new bit of gear for me, um, two new things. So I've got the bike all ready to go on the work stand, I might need to lift it up a little bit just to get access to everything, but I wanted to show a couple new bits that I've got. Uh, it's a new grips to go on. These ones are the DMR um, brand dog grips. They are the narrow or slim ones. Uh, I got the black and grey version just to kind of go with like the silver bits and that on the bike. Um, I think they'll look pretty good. I've heard pretty good reviews about them. Also, they're nice and well, they're reasonably priced anyway. Put it that way. They're, I think they were twenty five bucks uh, Australian plus delivery um, but the big thing that I've got these are cool but the big thing that I've got today is a, a new front brake um, so what happens was I like to run Saint brakes because I really do like their their stopping power um, when I sold my old bike I thought I sold it with XT brakes on they're also pretty good then they weren't the the new um, four piston XTs, they were just the two piston XTs. Look, they're a great brake as well, um, but I do like the, the sheer stopping power of the Shimano Saints. Um, so I must have sold it with a Saint front brake because for the life of me, I couldn't find my front brake when I bought this bike. So what I've got today is I've got a Saint rear brake and I've just got like a, a base model Shimano front brake. Um, works well, just probably just doesn't have quite as much power, but I have gone in a completely different direction. And I've got something else altogether. So let's open her up and see what we bought. If I can. <laughs> oh, sorry about the camera view. All right. Boom. That's pretty sick. Uh, that goes in there. So, purchase from Lord Gun. Um, seem to be okay. Never purchased from them before. I have bought the Magura MT7 Pro HC, so it's got the one finger lever. Um, yeah, that's nice. Now, the reason I bought the MT7 is because I have, for a long time, I've heard that they're amazing, they're really good brakes. Um, very good stopping power and that same as the Saints or compatible with the Saints uh, but maybe with a little more modulation and I have thought you know I've seen them on a few pro bikes um, Sam Pilgrim runs them on all his bikes obviously you know sponsored athlete and everything that's cool um, but I thought you know what the hell I'll give it a go if I don't like it I'll pull it off, I'll sell it, and I'll put a Saint on. Um, otherwise, you know, I can run MT7 front and Saint rear. So obviously I'm in Australia. If you haven't sort of picked that up by now, now rear brake is on the left for us and front brake is on the right. And I obviously will be running it like that. So um the one thing with this is i believe the the length on them is about 2200 2.2 meters um so either way you go front or rear it's probably going to be cut down i think my rear hose is about 1700 or something like that um one thing i've just noticed is it's got a black callip uh black lever and like a grey caliper. So I believe it was supposed to be all black, but let's see what happens. I might have to email them or something. Um, 
The other thing as well, I don't know how we're going to go with, with cutting the hose down and that. I know that a lot of the time the olives you have to change. Um, Shimano do send them out with them. I was supposed to receive them. Um, with this break, but we'll see what happens anyway. The plan is to install that and the grips today. Um, and I just thought I'd bring you along for the journey. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is remove the old brake, the Shimano brake. BLMT 500. I think it's pretty much just a budget spec brake that they throw on. Although this bike actually never came out with Shimano brakes as standard, had guides on it, I believe. Uh, what we might do as well is we might just remove the grips, just make life a bit easier. A little bit of water in there. So this is a fairly easy process if you've never removed a brake before, uh, especially with Shimano brakes. A lot of a lot of brake companies now uh, come in with these sort of these levers. You actually don't have to take your grips off to remove the brakes. All you need to do is take the bolt out, get a pin, which is usually what's this two mil Allen key, uh, and then just come in from the side and find a little, a little pin in here. Don't know if you can see that. It just pushes a pin allowing that to come back and then when it's closed, um, just stops that from being able to be opened. So a really simple job. And let's lift the bike up a little so I can be working. Don't have a work stand, get one because it just makes life so much easier. If you are using a work stand, it is a lot easier to, um, at least in my instance, it's a lot easier just to have the front wheel out because it does have quite a bit of weight that kind of just kind of makes a bike want to sag. Um, so I just like to remove them, and it's been removed anyway for being able to do the tyre. Now, this one here is. Nice little Allen key as well. Now, I didn't buy adapters or anything for this new brake going on. The brake rotor size is the same size. So I've got a 203 on there now and a 203 is going back on there. So I'm hoping that this, um, this adapter bracket will work. If not, we won't be doing much today. Popping down over here. These are a flip top lever, meaning that you can put it on the right hand side of your bike or the left hand side of your bike and it won't make a difference. Whereas the Shimano stuff uh, is not actually compatible. That is a rear lever only. You cannot turn that. In my application, it's a rear rear lever only. I cannot flip that onto this side of the bike. Hopefully you can see that. All right, so we're not tightening them up completely. Just um, just to a point where it kind of 
holds the, the caliper in position. Bit of movement in there now, which is totally fine because obviously we need to we need to centre that on the brake rotor when we set the brake rotor up. But for now, all I'm trying to do is get that kind of plugged into position so that I can I can cut the hose down. Off she goes. So I might just tighten that fella up a bit more just to hold him in position. Making sure that gap's even both sides. And I tighten it up. Okay, that's probably the bleed port right there. Uh, you got reach adjustment there, uh, and then on the bottom here. is probably the pad contact point. I haven't actually worked that out yet, but I will do that, obviously. So, that gives us enough to go full swing. That's where we want it. Right there. This is about as scientific as it gets to when you're doing this sort of stuff, just basically making sure that everything still works. Um, obviously if you tighten it up too much, if you you know make that hose too tight, then turning the bike handlebars, uh, it, you know, you might sort of pull too tight on it. More so when you're dealing with rear brake and whatever not so much the case here. Now after you do cut your brake line, first things first, pop these fellas back on because otherwise you get to put in ferrules on and all this sort of stuff and then you gotta pull them all back off. That's not cool. Good news, got some bits. Um, completely my fault, turns out that they were in the box. <laughs> when I lifted this bit up, they were actually underneath that, um, which, no, that's not correct, sorry. Lifted this bit up and they weren't under there, and it turns out, there they are there, they were under there. So, great news, because we've got them, which means that we can fit these little suckers here on the hose that we've just cut down which will move again because I want to take it over to the vise and do it in the vise because it's just so much easier when you can just hold the hose and tap everything in properly so let's move over there now right here we are over at the vise Apologise for all the crap in the background. Um, I've lowered the bike down so that I'm still higher than the caliper here when we fit this. Otherwise, if it's if the bike was still higher and then this point here was lower than the caliper, then oil would bleed out, which we're just trying to avoid doing a full re-bleed on. So what we've got is we've got some parts to do to do the hose. Shortening. Uh, now, if you un are unsure, you can always just look at the um, the old hose. So, for instance, I'll go grab that now, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. As you can see, we've got an olive here, and then we've got the ferrule. Um, that's pretty much what we have to re replicate on the hose. So, they do give you a few other bits and pieces, uh, such as. They give you two of each, they give you two olives and two ferrules. Sounds terrible, doesn't it? Um, and then they give you two, which would I assume would be brake bolts or caliper bolts. Um, we don't need them because 
because I'm running an adapter because I'm going to a three mil rotor on the front, I've got a 180 on the rear, um, then yeah, they're just too short to be run with an adapter. You do get a couple washers to run with the bolts and then this little dude here, which I'm assuming is for plugging off the, the hose, didn't use it anyway. So I've got one of these guys already on the hose. Whoa. One of these guys already on the hose and then obviously he's just about ready to be put in. And we can go and knock him into position with the trusty old massager. Just works so much better. I have done that by hand before, trying to hold the the blocks and hammer that in, and yeah, not super fun. So he goes in there, then the olive gets pushed in, and then the brake gets. Thread it on. Let's undo that dude. Uh, eight mil open-ended socket or box wrench. I think that's right. Box wrench if you're in the states. And then we just tighten them up. So you do want these to be up pretty tight because that's actually what's doing all your work. It's squishing that, that olive in. If I've got them around there, I might apologize. This guy goes back on. Ta-da! <laughs> cool. Now we'll put that caliber back on and tighten everything up. Pretty keen to see how these things work. Uh, I have heard pretty good stuff about them. Um, I have heard that they've got really, really good power, um, but with really, really good modulation. Because that is one thing that Shimano brakes do not have. Uh, they've got all the free stroke adjustment, you know, all that sort of stuff on them, which, if you've done any research online, you will probably find out that it's a load of crap because it does nothing. Whip him back into here. And then we'll just wrap him back up.
grips. Nothing. We put on the Nagura MT7 brake on the front of my bike. So that's that puppy there. Um, very highly rated bro uh, brake. Very similar sort of results to the Saint brake. So I'm already running. So that's the rear brake. That's the front brake. Um, there's the caliper down there. Pretty cool looking caliper with the fluoro highlights and that. Now, put the brake on, uh, bled it, everything kind of came up fine. Um, I did end up putting the race pads on, just because it probably didn't have what I'm quite used to with the Saint brakes, is that really sort of grippy feel. So hence the reason I ended up putting the race pads on, because they're kind of like the more comparable to what I got. So from just riding up here, the Magura brake feels really good. Um, certainly a lot more modulation than the same brake and probably probably equal sort of power, just doesn't have as much initial bite. Um, you know, Saints are kind of, you just, you put them on, they lock up and that's kind of all there really is to it. So we just thought we'd just do a bit of a road test on the brake and um, just came to the local trails just to sort of see how we're going with it and test it out So we're about to drop into Carnage, um, which is at Bunyaville Conservation Park and um, Yeah, pretty good place to, to try that out because it's probably the most downhill track here So let's get into it All right dropping into Carnage with the new brake on Let's give it a bit of a road test Quite a few features on this one. Certainly does well, slowing the bike down.
probably yeah as much as you're ever going to need it's definitely a gravity uh, style brake in the sense that it's made for downhill sort of enduro riders um, and so I suppose anyone like me who's looking to just be able to bang the brakes on last minute and know that you're still going to stop I personally don't care too much for modulation although you never know six months with this brake maybe I'll probably well maybe I'll look at getting another one for the rear for a little bit more modulation but I really do like how strong it is how powerful it is It certainly slows you down. You can pull up right up to the last second on a corner and just pull that lever and it pulls you up pretty quick. So that's my initial thoughts on it. Let us know what you guys think. If anyone runs them, either the Magura MT7 or MT5 or, um, or even the Shimano Saint. Let us know your thoughts. Thanks, guys.